All right, welcome back. In this video, we are drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the simply supported beam that has three point loads on it. So the first thing that we wanna do is draw the free body diagram and then solve for the reaction forces at A and B. So we find that AY is equal to seven kilonewtons and BY is equal to five kilonewtons. So now we're ready to go ahead and draw our shear force diagram. So we'll make sure we line it up right below the, the free body diagram, just like that. And we'll give it a label. We'll say this is the SFD for shear force diagram. Now the way that we do this is we'll just start from left to right drawing. Uh, we'll take a virtual section between each of these uh, point loads. So from uh, so for the section from zero to one meters, we're going to have a little mini free body diagram that looks like this. We have our AY here, seven kilonewtons pointing up. And then we don't have any other applied forces because we're from zero to one meter. So we'll have just the shear force, the internal shear force here. And in order to get the force balance, this has to be equal to seven kilonewtons. Now, if we look at our positive sign convention here, when the cut is on the right hand side of a member and it's pointing down for the shear force, that means it's positive. So we map that here to our graph as positive seven kilonewtons. So that is positive seven, or this is positive and this is minus. All right, so we're just gonna bring that right across uh, because uh, right across to one meter, because as you can see, if we cut it here versus cutting it here, it doesn't matter. It's going to be exactly the same situation. We haven't crossed that point load yet. All right. So let's draw the free body diagram now for the beam all the way from zero to three meters. So we have to include this, uh, this reaction force here, and we also have to include this point force. So the point force here, it's not to scale, but we have, we have it pointing down here at five kilonewtons. Now, uh, we haven't reached this, so the force balance here, we have to have a shear force, and uh, it looks like to get the balance here, we just need two kilonewtons pressing down. And again, we check, we, we check the balance, five plus two is seven, that's right. We look at our positive sign convention, and it's pointing down on the right-hand side, so it's positive. So that means we're coming out to, uh, if that was seven, two is going to be about down here. It jumps down to two, and it stays there until the next point load. So we'll just draw it like that. And then this is just a straight line down connecting those. And this is now at two. Um, all right, now if we if we redo our, our diagram here again, let's get rid of all this stuff. Um, we're gonna see that if we go now from, from zero all the way to five meters, we have to include uh, two point loads pressing down. So one is five and the other one is also, well, we can, there, there's two. One is five, another one is five. What you can also do is you can just do the math yourself and just say, well, we have a total of seven kilonewtons pushing up here and we have a total of 10 kilonewtons pushing down. This is what I like to do, it's a little bit faster. Then when we go to draw the shear force, it's quite easy. We just take the, the difference here and we see that we have to get three kilonewtons pushing up for our shear force. Now when we go and check this, it is opposite to what is positive. So this is actually a negative three kilonewtons. So this drops us down to about three, that's probably about three right there. And we can just connect these and boom, we will shoot that over just like that. And we'll throw this label here, this is negative three. And you know, if you want, you can even write, probably a good thing to write the, the units here. So for the last section here, we are, are sort of the whole free body diagram with resultant forces in here um, for, for zero all the way to just before six. We're gonna have still, we always have that seven kilonewtons pressing up from this reaction. And then the total resultant force pressing down is just five plus five plus two. Uh, so we get uh, that is 12 and then and then we obviously need a little shear force in here of five kilonewtons and uh, that is opposite the positive sign convention for the cut on the right hand side of the member so like we said that's five it becomes negative and uh, and to bumps it down to negative five and then it finishes off there at negative five. All right, so that is our whole shear force diagram. Uh, let's go ahead now and draw the bending moment diagram. So for a problem like this, uh, I recommend not doing any actual longhand calculations to get the bending moment diagram. It's way faster if we just take the areas in the shear force diagram as the changes in the bending moment diagram. So the first thing that we need to notice is 
that the moment, the internal moment at a pin is zero because pins can't resist a moment, so it can't build up to anything. So when we have a simply supported beam like this, uh, with a pin on each side, we're going to start at zero and we're going to end at zero. The other types of situations where you can uh, have zero bending moment is at the free end of a cantilever beam. So like uh, right here, uh, this won't build up any moment, uh, but the, the fixed end at a cantilever beam will not usually be zero. Um, so just watch out for that. All right, uh, but in these cases, zero here and zero here. All right, so what we need to do then is we just take the area of, of this section, so it's seven, uh, the height here is seven and its width, uh, its light width is one, so seven times one, that just brings us up to seven meters, or sorry, seven kilonewton meters. We can just drop that on like that and then just connect that with a straight line, boom, like that. And when it's positive, this basically just pushes us towards the positive side, and it's just a linear growth when, uh, when, this, is, uh, when this is a square here. All right, so here for two, uh, its height is two, its width is two, so that's gonna push us up, uh, two times two is four, and uh, that's gonna push us up another four units, and seven plus four is 11, so that takes us there. Boom, just like that. And then uh, th that was also a positive area. Now when we're looking here, this is a negative area. It's below the, the axis here on the negative side. So we have negative three times two, that's negative six. And so we basically just have to subtract six and we get that linear uh, push towards, uh, well, 11 minus six is five. So it's gonna bring us back to positive five kilonewton meters. Boom, just like that. And then the last one in here, negative uh, 5 times a distance of 1 meter, so negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, and we just get that push, so 5 minus 5 units, that just brings us right back down to 0, and that's what we were expecting, so that's a really good check for us. Alright, so that's all, we, uh, that's all we need to do. We have drawn the bending moment diagram and we've drawn the shear force diagram, so mission accomplished for this problem. If, you, uh, if this bending moment diagram looks upside down to you, uh, that is because some countries in the world draw the bending moment diagrams flipped vertically. Um, this is the way that I like to draw them, and, I, and I'll keep doing that for the videos. But uh, if you've been taught to draw it the other way, then that's okay too. Uh, just do what, uh, what is the convention in your country.